You can no, leave it up there. I'm yeah, just okay. wondering. I will probably try and drink it. Should, should we, I, yes. I plug Terra Underground? Yeah. What is that? Excav- excavation company. My buddy owns it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. They just do underground work or like site work, all oh, the whole deal? Everything. Yeah. They prep for all the neighborhoods in the area. Okay. Yeah. And cool. commercial sites. You're already yeah. failing on the microphone, by the way. I'm just going to oh, go I'm yeah, going to move everywhere. Deep, yeah. That's yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> just just deep throat. I had a partner I worked with for a long time. Um, and yeah, I used to accuse him of actually literally swallowing his microphone. Cause when he talked on that damn thing, it was like, what is happening, dude? It's like, it's in your throat right now. Uh, anyway, so do that. Yeah. But not, right. not actually. Mm. And it's okay if the old whiskers tickle the mic. Cause <laughs> don't <laughs> Google that later. Either. <laughs> don't, don't Google whisker tickling. Holy <laughs> Welcome to Residing in North Idaho, our podcast uh, that's informational for people that are looking uh, or interested in North Idaho, so uh, locals and foreigners alike. Um, Yeah. So today we have a really special guest. Uh, This is Ryan Miller. Ryan is a sergeant with the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office. Um, I worked with Ryan. In fact, Ryan was uh, at the academy uh, when I went through the Academy up here in 2019. When you got Star Pupil Award? Star Pupil. Number one in your class? I'm pretty much the reason why. I mean, I was your mentor and, you know. Yeah, that and he gave it to us. He gave it to a city cop. Yeah, is, he didn't I mean, even give it to a deputy. Ooh, good point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. So Ryan is here. Ryan is in charge of all the waterways and backcountry for Kootenai County and enforcement, uh, specializing mostly in waterways, diving, what else? Uh, dive, sonar, marine, backcountry, search and rescue, air support. So pretty much all the fun stuff. All that stuff. Yeah. So if you get a ticket while you're on a boat. Oh, yeah. It's not this guy. It's no, all yeah. his minions. I'm supervising so. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we thought this would be a great idea to bring Ryan on here. Um, Ryan has a lot of knowledge about especially the waterways up here. I know they've changed a lot over the past five to ten years. Um, definitely in just the amount of people that are getting on the water. And so we'll probably have some questions uh, on regulations and kind of what people should look out for on the water and and how to stay safe out there. And then we'll ask you some other questions about uh, about making sure that People are discharging firearms safely out in the middle of the forest and everything else. Good stuff. I read the other day that Idaho has more miles of river than any other state. I told you that. No, I read it. I said more navigable waterways than any other state other than Alaska. I do not recall that conversation. I read it (laughs) myself. I, too, was a boat captain. Okay. Like officially? You're a sergeant, right? Yes. What's higher? Lieutenant. Captain. Lieutenant. Captain. 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 Okay. I was a boat captain. So. Wow. Like, well, is yeah. that official title? Did you have a, a badge and shit? No, no, I was a boat captain for the fire department, but it's, we definitely, I don't know, near as much, I have to call him all the time and ask him like, hey, am I allowed to do this out on the water? Yeah, that, like, I actually have questions about that. I want to know how not to get a ticket on the water because that, that is a common yeah. fear of mine when I'm don't out there. Don't break the law. Okay, yes. Yeah. I don't actually know what the law is. Yeah. That's, that's, that's big, the problem. We're going to ask can a few I, questions about that I, today. You know, for example. I know, and this could be a teaser, but like, can I drink an alcoholic beverage while in control of a boat? Not saying I've done that, but I'm you just mo- saying you most certainly can. No, yeah. In, in Idaho. So, you know, like a lot of states, so we have Coast Guard rules that we follow. And then we yeah. also have state laws as well. So a lot of the states are going to change uh, uh, based off of, you know, where you're at in the country, obviously. But yeah, for Idaho, we'll talk about that um, for sure. Coast Guard rule, they're rules. They're not laws. They're rules that everyone has to follow. You also have international uh, rules you have inland rules so we're going to follow the inland rules and our state adopted a lot of those so we can't obviously we can't take away from what the coast guard puts into place but we can add to um so a lot of it though idaho obviously is not very restrictive so we don't restrict like a lot of other states we're one of six states that do not offer or do not mandate any boaters education oh my gosh we're going to talk about this oh yeah in a little bit because i have questions so, before we get too far into okay. this though can you give us some of your background and kind of who you are what you do Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Ryan Miller, uh, uh, Sergeant with the Sheriff's Office, been here 17 years, uh, going Ooh. to 17 years. Yeah. A couple of days, Dang. uh, started, uh, army first. So seven years in the army, uh, as a paratrooper. So I used to be a lot taller by the way. And you no, know, it's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so did that for a few years, born and raised in South Florida. Um, I, I Googled that the weather was the same here. So that's yeah, for, naturally that wow. happens a lot. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah same, same it before Google. <laughs> yeah, it was before <laughs> Google. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. So my, my wife's born and raised in Coeur d'Alene and, and we wanted to raise, you know, kids in a, in a safer area. That's what, what brought us here. And we're, we're glad we did that. I do miss the sunshine sometimes, but you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's sunny next week, 60 it, oh, degrees, oh yeah, that's, 65 makes you happy. 
Makes yeah. you happy. That Very better cool. be the end of it. We don't want another like false winter right after that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're done. Yeah. I yep. said that five times this year. We're done. <sighs> yeah. We definitely haven't had enough snow <laughs> that we need, but <laughs> yes. awkward. Hold on. I'm oh, yeah. trying to get this. This is terrible. Sorry. Goodness. Right in the middle of his introduction. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. No, okay. So paratrooper and yep. then moved here. Yep. Uh, yeah. Moved here, uh, 2007, uh, started working for the sheriff's office, worked in the jail for two years. Um, and then I've been on patrol ever since. So I've been a field training officer for eight years, five as a, uh, actual training officer and three as a supervisor, uh, worked at the Academy. That's where I met Dave here. Uh, Aww. oh yeah. Yeah. Did a, did a whole year at the Academy, uh, and then been in the, the rec safety, uh, side for, uh, this is my third year now. Is the Academy a full-time gig here? Um, it wasn't, it is becoming so now. Yeah. yeah. So we have a couple of recruit training officers that are out there now. Full yep. time. Okay. Yep. We actually started, I started in 07 too. I just left before you, but yeah, cool. Fun story. Sorry. Go on. All right. And then now, <laughs> thanks for sharing Seth. <laughs> now recently, I mean, you've been a sergeant for a while and then how long have you been assigned to uh backcountry and waterways and all that? Three years. Uh, it's a five year rotation. So we do rotationals here. Um, so our deputies are four years and then the, the sergeants are currently at five. So I have two full-time deputies that are in Marine. I have two full-time deputies that are in backcountry. I have about 100 volunteers. That's all on the search and rescue side. So they're all volunteers. Ooh. We're actually, we just added 25, and we're going to add another 25 in a couple months. So people can uh, start applying for that um, if they'd like. So volunteers, it's a lot. It's a big time and, and uh, money commitment. But we get called out more than anyone else um, in this region. We're, we're very, very busy in every unit that I supervise. So we also have... Um, uh, seasonal marine deputies that my full-time guys uh manage so i have 12 of those you can be 18 years old and we give you a badge and a gun about a month of training and send you no way water. oh yeah yeah that's dude a badge and a gun month is that of training? A, I mean, is yeah, that a, a uh <laughs> is the boat unit like a coveted spot for the full-time you know i will say before the past couple of years all of these uh the, these specialties were very coveted but with you know hiring now it's it's yeah. difficult we're getting more people leaving law enforcement and it's not as uh as you guys know it's not as as a uh you know I, I guess it's not as sexy as it used to be you know yeah i've i've often like i thought about it it was never an option for me i was a trooper but um you know i see the deputies out there and i'm like that looks cool and then i think about it i'm like you know what you're on the water in the summer but you can't swim and you're just like party crashing constantly. I'm like, uh, maybe not. It, I don't know. It definitely takes some of the appeal away from boating. It's yeah. not as, as yeah. It's not like okay, I'm gonna go out there and there's gonna be you know ladies in bikinis and you know sunshine and all that. No, that was that was my experience yeah. when I was a fire captain. Yeah. What the, the hell? Water. Wow. Everybody yeah. was Have really nice to us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Imagine we got in trouble. Funny, I think I told you this. We got in trouble. So our uh, one of our uh, chiefs, uh, Tom Marshall, he lived in Havasu. So we covered. Um, we covered basically from from Havasu up to Topak, almost. Well, we actually covered all the way up to the Nevada border, so where you go to Laughlin, okay. Um, and uh, so you know, we would have Topak as a big party area, and obviously nobody likes sheriff, yeah, right. Nobody wanted to talk to them, but we'd have a fireboat out there, and we'd have people that would come up to us. Many times they were female, and uh, they would ask us for stickers. So where would they put those stickers? We got, <laughs> so we'd always hand out stickers and they would be like, ah, oh, we'd hand you know, we give them a few and we get a call one day while we're on the water chief calls and he's like, Hey, where are you guys at? I go, oh, we're, we're on the water. We're, we're patrolling, patrolling. <laughs> and he's like, uh, Hey, you guys handing out stickers? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Just like we do on you anything. Call them stickers or pasties? Stickers. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, perfect. He goes, I just saw a couple of those stickers down here in Havasu. He goes, uh, Let's make sure we hand them out in odd numbers. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. Ah, yep. Sorry, chief. So anyways. yes, we have seen the similar uh, behaviors down in uh, Harrison, Idaho. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, Harrison's that's... like a little Havasu. <laughs> it can be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so, okay. Yeah. Back to the patrol in the boats. I mean, how many, cause it's a big ass lake. And lakes. you guys cover lakes, right? Because you've got right. Pondre as well. Yeah, a so chunk of it. Eighteen lakes, fifty-four miles of navigable river. Good Lord. That's my recruiter coming Jeez. out. There. Yeah, that's a lot of lakes, dude. Yeah, we have a lot of waterways. So we have the second most water in Idaho. Bonner County has the most, and then we have the most populated uh, waterways in the state of Idaho. So we have about twenty twenty-seven thousand total registered boaters, plus Jeez. all the other people that are coming out. Uh, the, the next populated in the state of Idaho is Bonner County. It's half of what we have. Do you guys have enough deputies to do that? No, Even with the, you can't, no, right? no, no, way. no, no, we do. What we can. So we have, um, we usually Coeur d'Alene obviously our biggest and Spokane river. So we'll put three deputies up towards or three teams. So teams of two up towards the, the Northern part, one on Hayden, 
one that kind of drives around the north and western lakes and then the you know maybe a team that goes down south sometimes and then some of the like chain lakes so we have a lot of chain lakes and the Coeur d'Alene river that's all going to be a lot of response or or you know intermittent patrolling just yeah. trying to figure out where I can I can boat under the influence safely. Well, so going back to that question, it's uh, so you can have an alcoholic beverage while you're operating a, a vessel, but the tricky part is it's still 0.08 uh, is the legal limit for right. uh, what we call an OUI or a BUI, operating or boating under the influence. So it's this very similar charges. You don't lose your license or anything like that. So it's actually not as restrictive or not as punitive as a DUI is. Um, but same, same level. So 0 0.08. And one thing you don't have on the road that you do have on the water is environmental factors. So you have the, the sun, you're not drinking as much water. Um, you know, you, you the, uh, water's actually leaving your body uh, sooner because it's hot, you're sweating. Uh, so you're not eating as much. It's actually easier to get to that 0 0.08 on the water. Now, is it, sorry, quick question. No. Is it probable cause to stop you if you have an alcoholic beverage in your hand? Not, not necessarily, but one thing to, to know about on the water, especially we do have the U.S. Coast Guard that comes out and patrols our waterways because both Coeur d'Alene, Spokane River, um, Coeur d'Alene River, and Pend Oreille and all their rivers and tributaries, all of those are federally navigable. So the Coast Guard comes out twice a year and they actually patrol their big orange boats come out here and yeah. drive do, around. Do they have any uh, any powers out Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so it's all coast. It, it, I mean, it's federal, so they actually don't need a legal reason to stop you at all. They can just board you. Technically, uh, Idaho can too, but we do not. We always try to find something. Yeah. There usually always is stuff. I mean, just, there's so many. Just like chasing, chasing yeah. taillights, you can always find a reason. You can always find yeah. something, especially on a boat. I mean, it, you know, that's we, we have uh, – it gets very populated in this area. So boats pass way too close to each other. And it's not like there's, you know, on the road, you have lines and you have, you have stop signs and signals and everyone knows where they should and shouldn't go. You don't have that in the water. Um, et, you know, the, the, the etiquette's not there. Um, people just don't know as much. There's again, there's no mandate to learn. So people just go out there and we, we see there's a lot of ignorance, a lot of yeah. ignorance and Guilty. I, I think yeah. that's one of those things. So <clears throat> like I said, I, you know, I, I always tout and say yeah, I was a boat captain. I was really out there for about a year and a half. I helped start a boat program. So I don't have a ton of experience. It was on, you know, it was not a big lake. I mean, we were on a river, but you know, we did have a major incident at the end of 2018 where we had two boats collide. Mm -hmm. One didn't have its lights on. We had and the other one was pulling ago. out of a, uh, of a uh, Topak. We had 16 victims. Oh. Four of them. We did body recoveries over, you know, three or four days for, um, other ones were just picked up by random boaters and taken down. I mean, we couldn't get a body count because we didn't that's know where people mess. went. It was. And so <clears throat> I think that's the one thing. It it blows my mind. My son just got his license. You have to, to drive on a road, you have to get a license. You have to go through a permanent process. You have to take a test. You have to do all these different things. Driver's training for a year. But for a boat, yep. what's the requirement to drive a boat? In, in Idaho, you hop on it and go. And you can be 14 years old. 14 years 14 old. and not have anyone else they're actually we have 14 15 year olds on these lakes you know and they're in a million dollar boats and they're they have their friends uh we actually had a, a fatal drowning several years ago when there was a bunch of teenagers and you know one jumped off the back we had that triple fatal boat crash several years ago with one boat hit another with no lights on it yeah they, uh oddly we had a couple planes crash into each other so we even have have had that one right i we remember a, that, that a lot was... of vehicles that drive into the water i mean so there's a lot, but just uh, focusing on, on the boat side. Yeah. You don't need education here. And I think that's important for you to realize if you own a boat and you're out on our waterways, just be safe. I mean, we want responsible boaters out there uh, for everybody. Yep. But the truth is, is that you can have a 14 year old running a boat without anybody else out there. Um, and the, the other thing, you know, a boat is so different. You deal with currents, you deal with wind, you no deal breaks. with all this other stuff. No, no breaks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a big thing. Yeah. Um, and you don't need any training. No. I mean, if you want to see, if you heard of Site 6 mm -hmm. uh, down at Havasu, oh. you got to look this up. Oh, dude. We need to do this up on here. On my work phone or on my So we're going to cause all sorts of calls for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Site 6 is a public launch down in Havasu. Oh, yeah. And guys will go and they will, like, no joke, three dudes will go down there with, like, uh, you know, a bunch of beers and lawn chairs and they'll just sit there and watch oh yeah the public launch their boats <laughs> miami boat ramps too I dude it. <laughs> if you look at the videos online you type in youtube site oh, yeah. six have oh. a sue and you see i mean people are just egging everybody on one dude was trying to back it in couldn't get it straight he got out and his girlfriend got out and went and did oh, it for him that's oh, awesome. man. never lived that it time. was it was hilarious but I mean, that's the same thing up here. Yeah. You get people from out of town that oh. don't know how to back in trailers, don't know how to launch boats. I mean, 
um, it, there's, there's no training for it and oh. it stinks. So, well, so that's actually changing. So we, we do have some, uh, some boat education that you can get for free. So a lot of other States. So like I said, there's six that don't require anything. There's another seven that require, if you were born, you know, before, uh, 1982 or something like that, or 1993, they all change different States. You can get a little um, closer to that. By the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. I keep moving. I, I cannot sit still. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's touching now. <laughs> so uh, there's some states that if you were born at a certain time, you're grandfathered in, you know, but but the rest of the states, they do mandate some type of education. So we teach that. The sheriff's office actually has a class for free. Um, uh, uh, Tobler Marina, Hagedon's done it as well. There's several other marinas around here that are hosting these classes or the sheriff's office will do it. It doesn't cost anything. It's about six to eight hours. Uh, a couple of deputies will come out and teach the entire class. You get a boater safety card from Idaho Department of Parks and Recreation. We partner with them. It's all free. And then they send it uh, or they get you a card and you can go anywhere in the country and boat. Um, so even the places that do require it. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, brand new program here. It exists on the East Coast. Uh, we're bringing it to the West Coast. I'm actually uh, contracting with them. It's called Safer Boater. Uh, people can go in there and look up the Safer Boater company. But essentially, you can buy a voucher when you buy your boat from a dealership or go through Safer Boater directly. And a, a, they'll send a boat captain out for four hours initially. And we're... The sheriff's office class is all in the classroom. It's no on the water training. Right. This is no classroom. It's all on the water. So oh, it's nice. four hours cool. you start with and, and you get a boat captain, a certified U.S. Coast Guard captain that has certain uh, power boating experience and certification. Are you a certified? Yes, I am. All actually, right. I'm, I have this company going <laughs> right now, actually. Brand nice. new. Right? This will be the first summer that we're offering it um, to this area. Um, is there a website or a link that we can get for that? We're working on it. So Safer Boater, uh, saferboater.org is the main company. And then yeah. I'm actually start my business is going to be takethecon.com. Okay. And that's going to be the, the local one here. We're also going to offer other captain services as well. So if you just want to go out there and chill out, you know, chill out and walk and hang out with your family on a boat or rent a boat, then we have a captain that will come take all of that. Uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on in the boat, outside of the boat and the, the operator of the boat is actually responsible for everything. So if two boats collide, um, we're on the road, one guy's at fault, one guy's not at fault most of the time. This time, everyone gets a little bit of, uh, of the, uh, wow. yeah. Yeah. So everyone is, has, has the, even you have the right of way, um, out on the water. It doesn't matter. You still have to avoid that collision at all costs. So everyone wow. can share a little bit of that. Even if a boat's floating, let's say a boat's floating and everyone's swimming in the water, that boat is still underway. If it's not anchored, if it hits another boat, someone's in charge of that. Someone can yeah. get a citation. Someone can get an OUI, even if they weren't sitting at the helm. Wow. There's a lot of different stuff with the boats. And again, that's what we're trying to get out there and teach. Dude. Yeah. How many, uh, you guys get a lot of boating accidents in the summer? So we used to, we used to get a lot. Um, Kootenai County was getting the most in the state of Idaho a couple of years ago. Uh, we were probably... And I'm going to say reportable crashes. So a reportable crash is $1,500 or more in damage. So if you look at a boat, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> boat, stands, yeah bro, boat stands for break out another thousand. I mean, it's expensive, right? <laughs> uh, it's actually a really funny YouTube video about that. Just look that up. I think it was right. a firefighter that did it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know those guys. So yeah. great. We have a lot of time mustache. on our hands. Yeah. 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 Exactly. A lot more yeah. time on yeah. our yeah. hands. Uh, so that or injury. Um, so we know we have a lot more crashes that are not reported to us. Uh, so they have to be reported, obviously. But we used to have, you know, reported crashes between 25 and 30 a year. The past couple of years, we've been around that 10, 11, 12 mark, which has been nice. Uh, what do you have, think's changed? Enforcement. Yeah. We're, we're not saying that we weren't enforcing before, but we're enforcing a lot now. So we, our citations, you know, used to average about 200 a season. We're up to about 500 a season. Um, our OUIs, we have the most OUIs or BUIs in the state of Idaho. That's again, that drinking where the rest of the state's getting about four or six in a season. We're getting 50, 53. We got 62 last year. Hell yeah. We're, we're actually, we've gotten some national awards, not saying that we want these, but from, <laughs> from NASBLA, the national association of safe boating law administrators, yeah. that's a mouthful. Um, we've gotten some national, actually it's us and, and, uh, San Bernardino, uh, Havasu. Oh yeah. That's we're, the busiest inland waterway in the country. We're neck and neck. We actually got more than them last year. Really? During I'm going to call July Travis weekend. Vessels down yeah. there. And I'm, do you, do you but, know Travis Vessels? No, I don't. Chance? I don't. I'm I know a couple of those guys. Though. He's your, uh, uh, you know, Billy Poe. Uh, -uh. So I guess okay. I don't know anyone. Though. I'm going to call yeah. Travis Vessels and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get him up here. So we'll put you both on a podcast. <laughs> there you and, go. So you guys are hooking more BUIs <laughs> yes. than anyone else. Um, and, and an agency our size or in the state of Idaho. Okay. Yes. Yeah. By far state of Idaho. No one else is coming near it. And 
I, I mean, that's good. I we mean, have a I'm, drinking problem. Well, yeah, or you're just doing the enforcement, right? right? We're like, enforcing a lot. You know what? I'm glad I, I think that. that was something that <clears throat> I remember that statistic when I went through. Um, I think Idaho got or Coeur d'Alene got voted the drunkest city in Idaho. DUIs and, was, and OUIs. We went in the both. Yeah, yeah. But you look at it and you go, you know what? The, the difference up here is that we have a North Idaho DUI task force yeah. that is extremely aggressive, Big especially time. in the summer when we get people from out of town. I don't want to see my kids hurt on the road. I have and uh, they, no qualms, yep. like smash them. I don't care. If you drink and drive and you're up here, I'm fine with you going to jail. What, Absolutely. What's a uh, side note, like a graveyard guy of Coeur d'Alene PD, like what's the number of hooks per month for DUI? I was a graveyard guy. And did you hook him? Do you know uh, what an arrest DUIs? is? Yes. But I was no, I, I, yeah, I was no Nick Knoll. What's like, what's <laughs> like the he's average? Good. What's the average? What's the, um, summer months? I, yeah. Yeah. I, you could pretty much get one a night. Oh yeah. Oh, easily. easily. That's if fantastic. you're looking that's easily fantastic. get one a night, I've had three before. Oh yeah. Um, that was a little much. That's a lot for well, me. Cause you got for a little the guy reports. Like me. a lot of reports. The arrest is about 30 minutes, yeah. but you know, now you're talking about two, three hours to write the report book, yeah. the evidence, all that. Stuff. Our, uh, our, for California, just like a straight blood DUI or uh, sorry, alcohol DUI like the reports were pretty easy if yeah. there's nothing else involved no evidence nothing like that we could knock them out in like 30 minutes so you yeah 30 minutes to go book maybe an hour well it's interesting so you guys have that unique feature you know unlike bonner's ferry and some other places that have more water is the fact that you have you have the combination of a resort town yes. and the water yeah, yeah that's and that, that's what creates those buis yeah that i-90 and 95 highway 95 corridor right there. i mean that's we're we're so busy and we're yeah. that close to to Coeur d'Alene or to spokane and we have the, we have the lakes we have you know Coeur d'Alene's a gorgeous lake ponderay ponderay is actually my favorite lake to boat on you got mm. you know mountains come out of the water a thousand feet it's amazing so this is a dumb question no, I, I think it's a dumb question uh, but i'm going to ask it anyways okay What's the, what's your advice for people? If they're going out on the water, they want to party all day. Like how do they avoid that type of stuff, putting themselves in a bad situation? So I'd say two things. That's not a dumb question at all. So two things. One, uh, the operator can't drink. I, I mean, can you legally? Yes, but the operator shouldn't be drinking. Not one drink. When I operate, I do not drink because again, you got so much going on inside the vessel. If you have 12 or 15 people in your vessel and then you have everything going on outside the vessel, it's just too much. You can't do it. You can barely focus when you're, you don't have, you know, these, these outside factors, right. environmental factors and that alcohol. So I say the operator doesn't drink. Education is huge as well. So alcohol education, life jackets, if those three things were always followed, alcohol education and life jackets, no alcohol. Yes. Education and more life jackets. I wouldn't, I've been a diver for 12 years uh, with the sheriff's office. I've pulled out hundreds of people out of these waterways. I wouldn't have pulled out. I've never pulled one out with a life jacket on for one, yeah. uh, mm. but those three things. And then also, if you just want to go out there and have fun, hire a captain. Not just me. There's so many captains in this area that are looking for for work to get out there, and you know, it's they're generally between you know sixty and seventy five dollars an hour. Yeah. But it, I mean, is that? But if you want to go out with a bunch of people, yeah, and party, four hours, you don't have to worry. The about captain it. will take care of everything. That's you know, that, especially yeah, if you're from out of town, that would be the way to go. Absolutely. I myself have a 15 year old, so I'm good. Well, if you <laughs> if you have eight people on a boat, I mean, splitting the cost of a captain is actually. Not too bad. It's, no, it's not bad. bad. They're knowledgeable of the area. They they know where they're going. So we have uh, something that's very unique to our waterways. We have deadheads. So there's the you know. Oh yeah, I'm ten, terrified of those dudes. Right? You should be ten or twelve foot logs that have been sitting on the water or on, on the on the uh, the floor of the lake for years. I mean, maybe a hundred years. This is a big logging area, and they'll pop up and float. And I, mean, I can't tell you how many phone calls we get. They want the sheriff's office to go out there and tow them all and get rid of them and remove yeah. them from the lake. And we, we don't. We just maybe tow them to another bay if they're really bad, but sometimes you can't see them. They sit an inch or two below the water or right above the water maybe. Yep. And with that sun glare, you can't see them. That will puncture. And we have at least one a year that it sinks a boat, uh, you know, $300,000 boat like that. Really? Oh yeah. That's Once what I'm trying for. Not yeah. want to be that guy. No, yeah. I'm terrified of those things. Cause I've seen a few pup bobbing around out there and you're like, Oh yeah. Damn. Yeah. That sucks. You're at they speed and you hit that. Get your slalom going. Yeah. Yeah. Be fun if you could see them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, what's the what's the speed limit? It's fifty five on that lake, right? Fifty. Fifty. Fifty on all the uh the lakes in uh Kootenai County. So yeah. that's a, a that's an ordinance. It's a it's not a state, that's a county ordinance. So yeah. check your county where you're boating. Know know what it is. Uh Bonner's the same. But fifty miles an hour, unless you're on a river. So we have the Spokane River and the Coeur d'Alene River. Uh it's gonna be thirty five miles an hour during the daytime. All of our waterways are twenty five miles an hour at night. All of them? All of them. Oh, okay. At night. I, mm. at night. I don't go out at night. I just I am yeah, too it's... nervous about dumb sh dumb shit. Well, two things. One, nighttime in the summer is eleven. True. I, I yeah. mean, so I'm that's... in bed by then, so yeah, that's exactly. not happening. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then 
it, it, I'll tell you right before uh night, right, right at that sunset, that's when it gets pretty difficult to see. Yeah. Um, it, the waterways aren't as busy, but you know, we stay on at night. We will stay until two in the morning on, on some, you know, busy weekends, holiday weekends. And we still have 25 miles an hour at, at night. Time. So it used to be yeah. 20. We changed that a couple of years ago because most boats now don't plow. Um, so you're, or, or they do plow. They don't plane until you hit that 25. Yeah. So if you're plowing uh, at 20 miles an hour, oh, you're yeah. not going to see anything. So that's where we increased it a little bit. Just so that nose comes down. And the wake too, and everything else. Absolutely. Well, my boat only goes forty miles an hour if I'm the only one on it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, even that mine. Be, I've got a Yamaha. I don't think it. I think it'll top out about forty, maybe. Well, I mean, dude, down in Havasu, we had like the tunnel holes down there. And some of those guys would, I mean, they pass SO down there, oh. going like 80, 90 miles an hour. Ponder And they turn on their lot, lights yeah. and then they just turn them off because they're just gone. They're like, yeah. oh, I can't, can't win them. that pursuit. Mm -mm. No, but we have a helicopter. So, I mean, that's true. You yeah. can't outrun that. No. The, uh, I always laugh at those boats because I'm like, man, what, like that dude has a, probably a really tiny penis, I would guess. Um, <laughs> we measure them. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> and they're burning like how many gallons of gas? Like a, a minute. Yeah. Is, oh, God. yeah. I know who's on your helicopter, so yeah. we'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll see. Yeah. I got to call him. I haven't seen him in a while. We have several people, so I don't know. Oh, you know who I'm talking okay. about. Oh, yeah, you do. You know who I'm talking about. He knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. He's, uh, we're gonna, he's on my softball team. Oh, oh yes. Yes, yeah. I know you're talking about. Yeah. We, we call him a floater. <laughs> we put him wherever. It, yes. <laughs> I can't say his name now. No, he's you've gone pretty far though. Anyways, I mean, yeah. Anybody that knows him can identify him. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, he's the only guy that I've seen strike out twice in an inning. So Oh. Is that my phone? Yeah, of course it is. That's not okay. my phone. Oh, mine's on silent. Can't be mine. It's yours. Uh, it's an eight hundred number. I'm not answering that. I wouldn't, uh, especially because yeah. we're doing it on the air, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so um yeah, no, that's good to know those those boating rules and regulations. And I had no I had no idea that. Now I don't have to hide, you know, I'll, I will like max out at two drinks if I'm dry, if I'm on the boat, but like now I know I don't have to actually hide it. Yeah, no, you don't <laughs> actually, actually we see the hide, you yeah. know, we see that. I That's imagine like, <laughs> it's like, I, I always thought back to like being a trooper and like, you see all the dumb shit people try to do to like make you think they're not drinking alcohol. Right. Or like yeah, when they you say, walk be up, be cool to the cops. Yeah. Yeah. You walk up and they're like popping gum or mints oh, and like the yeah. window opens that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff. And we so, call that a clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, it's all, yeah. that's a pretty good indicator. Somebody's going to jail. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and then, how many deputies do you have patrolling at one time? So we try to hire. Again, they're seasonal. Um, right. So we try to hire. Uh, we want six teams, so that's twelve deputies. And and I haven't been able to in the past couple of years. So years ago, we we were paying sixteen bucks an hour. We're paying twenty three dollars an hour now. We had to really you know step it up to. Not bad. Stay, well, twenty three bucks an hour. We had to stay competitive with McDonald's and Costco. No right. joke. I mean, we did. So 23 bucks an hour, um, they do a month of training in-house. We're all the instructors. Um, and again, they could be 18 years old. We have some retired uh, guys that are coming to us this year. And we have some that are brand new wanting to get into law enforcement. So it's a great stepping stone because you can work for me for a couple of months and then go to the academy in August uh, full time if, yeah. if you get picked up. So uh, if you don't have experience or if you come in and, and uh, you know, again, retired school teachers, we have a couple of teachers that have worked for us oh, in the yeah, past. Job, and man. every summer they just keep coming back. College students, they, they keep coming back. Yeah. So 12 is what I look for. I have this year, I have three returning. Um, I have uh, a couple, uh, like I said, a couple laterals that have come from other agencies that they retired and they just want to do something on, you know, in, in the summer. Um, and then uh, we have a, about six or seven that are still in backgrounds, but that's yeah. my biggest problem is people can't. You know what? And that's a lot of our viewers too. Uh, a lot of you that are out there are either law enforcement or service, you know, whatever service background. If you're interested, contact Ryan, contact us. We'll put you in contact with him because uh, it is, it's a, I mean, if you guys are at least paying more than McDonald's, that's pretty nice. Yeah, so, but uh, yeah, you can apply and you guys have, where can they apply? Is it just on kootenaycounty.gov? Yeah. So uh, kcgov.us is website uh, okay. or, or uh, Kootenay County, Google Kootenay County Sheriff's Office and, and that website will bring Got you it. there. Um, yeah. We also have marine at kcgov.us is our email. Cool thing is I tell people if they're boating in the area and you see an issue, if you email that every single deputy gets it immediately right to their email. Oh, okay. so yeah, that's good info yeah. right there. Yeah. Um, the, uh, oh, do you guys call them deuces up here? Alcohol DUIs? Uh, yeah, some people call them. Yeah. They, yeah. they call TCs crashes. Yeah. yeah. I go back and forth. Things on that. So yeah. it's a lot of plain speak <laughs> since 9 11. Uh, yeah, everything's kind of went to plain speak. So we got rid of codes and all that just to, you know, keep it. So what about the guys that already talked a lot on the radio when they were using codes and now they have? Oh, the, yeah. It's good Lord. Yeah, but now the computers actually reduce that a lot. We get to type a lot. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that's reduced. 
you can type while you're driving your car, but I can't talk on my phone. Exactly. Yeah, but we're trained, you know. We're tra- <laughs> totally. You're trained to type. Yeah, yeah. And I remember we're that driving, and I'm driving. like, and they're like, don't look at your MDC while you're yeah. driving. I'm like, really? I'm searching for a suspect right yeah. now. I'm getting down there. This is a priority call. I'm trying to read something this big. You are driving with my knees, down. and I'm typing, and I'm on the phone with a sergeant. Like, okay, well, yep. yeah. And then Goodness. your coffee, you know. Yes, yeah. you oh, have coffee, dude, that's right? exactly yeah. how it is. That's really so, funny. I'm also emergency vehicle operation instructor, so I would actually have to say, no, you do have to close <laughs> Ooh, the man. computer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Funny story about that. Going back to the academy. So I did my evoc with you. Yep. And I. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the day that I smashed Gertler's sandwich. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do remember. So we had this Speaking guy. Of name dropping. I'll, I'll take, I talk to Gertler all the time. He's doing phenomenal. You yeah, know what? Yeah. It's funny when you find people that leave law enforcement yeah. and they're doing great. And you're like, gosh, dang, man. Well, good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's doing phenomenal, man. He's got a good job. His family's growing. Um, super psyched for him. But I smashed the shit out of his hamburger. So he had he had this game. We get Okay. I tease Gertler. I'm like. When I was going through the academy, it was guys like Ryan. We went to high school at the same time mm-hmm. who I'm like, I want to hang out with this guy. This is like, <laughs> this is my generation. But I'm, you're with all the boots. I'm 36 <laughs> going through an academy with people that are in their early 20s. And that's great. They were phenomenal. But, I, I you know, yeah, I, not there's, there's a little bit of disconnect. I'm no, not 36 not. anymore. I'm 40. No, I have four. You're older than me, right? You determined 41, this? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. By like three months. Hmm. So we're in the academy. We're at Evoc that day. And Gertler had been playing this game, the whole smash your sandwich game or your food to where it, when we were at lunch, if you took a bite out of your sandwich and you set it down and you didn't put something on top of it, then it was fair game to smash. The games okay. we play. Now, oh, yeah. Gertler made the rules, and Gertler was the only one playing this. I hope he listens to this. I'm going to make sure he <laughs> remembers this and fires him up every time. So anyways, um, he ended up, uh, you know, he'd been doing it to people left and right. I mean, people put down their sandwich, and they wouldn't put a napkin on it or a fork or something, and he would just come over, and he'd do these, like, got you. And you're like, really? Can you stop touching everybody's food? <laughs> Child, dang it. <laughs> so anyways, we were doing Evoc. It was hot that day. We had a short lunch, and he didn't bring his lunch. So he headed down to uh, what, Rogers. He headed down to Rogers and he got this really expensive big bacon burger and he was talking about how he wanted it all day. <laughs> and he gets back and we got like five minutes left for lunch. Okay, I remember Haley Vessman was sitting on my right side because I remember that because I got crap all over her uniform. <laughs> So anyways, he, uh, he sits down. He's like, oh, my God, I'm so hungry. I got to scarf this down really quick. He takes one bite, sets it down, goes to wipe his face. And I saw it. And I, dude, I laid into it <laughs> twice. Just bam, bam. I mean, I, dude, I demolished. That's, there was no burger left. And it was right in front of his face in front of everybody in the academy. And he was so mad. I remember he looks at it for just a half a second. And then he, he laces into it. Just bam, picks up his stuff. There's tomatoes everywhere. There's stuff. Oh, man. That's Just awesome. smashed the crap out of it. It was it was probably my favorite memory. I bet he never played that game again, dude. And it, yeah, and it was he was so mad. And he's like, all right, fair game. Nope, you're right. It's like, it's not a problem. I'm like, dude, I'll buy your burger. I feel really bad. Nope, a nope. Little, a little tear going It's out. the rules. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, okay, it's the rules then. I would have eaten that thing anyway. Yeah. Oh, my God. There was, eye there was nothing. Oh, yeah, eye contact off the ground. It's, yeah, yeah, when yeah, I, no, sure. when I smashed it there, I promise you, there was, like, nothing left. <laughs> I mean, I... I almost hurt my fist hitting the, I mean, it was gone. That's awesome. It was great. Anyways, <laughs> Academy times. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good memories there. Back country. Yeah. Yeah. We have woods too. <laughs> is that what you call them? Uh, Are you the only sergeant in charge of all of this? Or is it, <laughs> how's that possible? Yeah, it's, it shouldn't be. <laughs> it's it's dude, crazy, man. No, we, we at least need, I, I'm trying to get another deputy. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to kind of push that stuff, you know, budgets. Um, oh, yeah. We're actually in budget season right now. So I've, I have seven budgets I'm in charge of and I've been working on them all oh. past two weeks. And yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. One guy, it should be two sergeants and a Lieutenant easily. Oh yeah. So I, that's me. I'm uh, yeah. that's why you keep calling me a Lieutenant. Cause I do a lot of lieutenant yeah. stuff, administrative. So I'm trying to get another backcountry deputy uh, to have a third one. One's in charge of, of SAR is what I want. Search and rescue my hundred volunteers. I have right now two guys that split those duties and, they, we do all the, I help them as well. We do all the call outs back to the back country. Can um, you still take some new, like if people want to volunteer, can they still contact you? And yes. Yeah. Uh, we're doing an Academy in a couple of weeks. So, okay. but for the next Academy, it's going to be like October, November. Yeah. Uh, actually all of our meetings for uh, search and rescue, it's up in Hayden, the volunteer search and rescue building. Uh, it's like uh, the 10,000 block of Ramsey. Yep. So up by the airport and it's uh, every first Wednesday of the month at 6 30 PM, people can show up there. It's a public meeting. Every and first Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday 
of the month. Of the month. Yes. Okay. 730. Those are my long days. I usually start my day and when, the first Wednesday of the month, I start at 630 in the morning and I leave at 930 at night. I texted you at like 645 this morning. You didn't respond. No, you didn't. Because he was working. <laughs> yeah. And it's not the first Wednesday of the month. Uh, there we go. Uh, but so backcountry, we have 18, uh, well, I talked about the 18 lakes, 54 miles of river. We also have 250,000 acres of forest service in Kootenai County. It's not very much. Yeah. You can leave uh, right here at Canfield or, you know, Bunko, 4th of July. You can go in the woods and you can drive, uh, you can hit Montana and Canada barely with hitting a, a paved road. If you do it right, you won't hit a paved road. Wow. So you can go straight out there. We have a lot. It's all national forest. Um, not just in that area. We have some down south as well. But that's that's, that's our big area that we have. Um, okay. And there's no cell phone service out there at all. So same thing with our chain lakes. People go down to the chain lakes. They don't want to see cops. They don't want to see people down there. So they go down there. But if you get hurt, you have life flight. I mean, it's a 45-minute response for us to get to you. The backcountry, it's not quick. So we get people constantly. They get stuck or get hurt, roll over, you know, 600-foot ravines that they go off of. Yeah. And it's not a quick response. So we're going to get there as soon as we can. But it is it is definitely difficult terrain. We're not going to mention the chain lakes anymore. They're a secret. What chain lakes? Yes, exactly. Okay. I got you. Perfect. <laughs> Keep some things quiet. So, uh, so patrol, in Washington. are they patrolling? <laughs> um deputies patrolling in side-by-sides? Are they in yes. trucks? or? Yeah. So we have, um, I have eight mm-hmm. snowmobiles currently, two dirt bikes eight four wheelers we track two of those in the winter three side four side by sides we track two of those in the winter as well and then we have trucks dude so yeah if you're into this type of stuff and and running those things this is a great opportunity if you want to come up and you're volunteer you have experience especially yeah that would be awesome our search and rescue members though we have we have a lot we have uh actually we're starting a mountain rescue team as well so they're going to do high angle uh ropes there's got to be people out there that would love yeah. to get into that it's very specialized so it, it does it, it's a, a bigger time and financial commitment than i think people realize so our average member response is about five years that they'll stay and then you know it, it we get called out a lot and we get used a lot but we have that team we have a canine t- team a man tracker team we're working on doing a special uh, tracker oh yeah that's yeah. a good show yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. like a posse <laughs> Uh, well, they actually go out there and they'll, they'll look at like how the, you know, a leaf is, you know, a focused in the sunlight, you know, and, and, you know, they can actually see the direction that someone went. They look at stuff completely different than we'll look at, at something. You look down at trail, but yeah, no one's been here. And then they'll actually start showing you how someone has broken a trail. Uh, so it, it's pretty, Damn. pretty in depth. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We have some teams that go out with us. And so when we do our patrols on snowmobiles, uh, there might be two, three deputies out there, but we'll have, you know, all eight of our sleds are taken up with people and there are search and rescue members. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause you never know when you're already out there, that's when the call is going to happen. That's right. super cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. I would be terrible at tracking people. My God. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm the administrator. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious so and you know obviously we we have a lot of podcasts about guns and everything else and, yeah. and gun rights and gun laws um can you touch on that real quick like what what are the what are the rules out in the national forest for discharging firearms and what you can carry what you can have those types of things yeah so there are definitely some rules out there um it's uh you can't shoot across roadways um you can't okay. shoot towards houses or or and there are houses out there no it or not um it, but it happens we actually have people that live in the forest service uh the first area and they have bullets at their house a lot or get very close to their house. The and a lot of it is people are shooting and they're not looking at their backdrop, you know, so firearm safety, you know, mm-hmm. the, the cardinal safety rules, they say, follow that stuff, but know what is in your backdrop. Uh, if you're shooting up from a high road again, they shouldn't be shooting from the road. Um, don't shoot across the road, but you shouldn't be shooting right at the road anyway, but they're shooting down and they don't see what's on the other side. People do live in these forested areas out here. Uh, more than people think we had a, two Amazon truck drivers get stuck the other night uh, in the middle of the night. One got stuck, called his buddy. He got stuck getting them. And then we had to go out there and respond oh, uh, to get him out. But yeah, Amazon's delivering out to people that live in the forested areas. So Holy we do smokes. have that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We do have that. Uh, wow. Got to get that new banjo. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, what are you ordering out there? <laughs> There are some areas that they're pretty well signed and they'll tell you where you can't shoot. Um, and there's a forest service actually did put up a, uh, a range. So you have Fernand range. You have to pay for that. And yeah. that's a forest service owned property. And there's a contract that goes up like every 25 years or something like that. Hayden Creek is that one's not manned and you can shoot at Hayden. Creek. That's the one off of like a high match in that area, right? Yes. It gets okay. very busy. Um, so you know, that that's where the, the safety is not always there because you just have anyone showing up. Yeah. You don't know who they are. Right. And then you can be out in other areas in the forested areas and you can shoot again, if it's signed, some are signed, you know, from this area to this area, no shooting. So you just got to pay attention to that. Okay. Yeah. Nice, man. Um, 
Well, shooting on your own property, do you know much about that? Like, is yeah. there a minimum acreage size or is it just a safety no. thing? No, yeah, safety. Again, backdrop. Um, so we'll have, we get a lot of disputes in this area on property on, you know, there's an easement that goes through here or, you know, my property line should be here because I found a 19, you know, 10 document, but your 2010 document is contradictory. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of property disputes and then shooting. Uh, you live in the county in Idaho. I mean, come on, that's why people are here. It's the sound yeah. of freedom that's, up here. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It is. Yeah, exactly. It's it's guns and taters. That's what we're here for, right? right. <laughs> yeah. I got a video. Taters. I got a video titled that exact thing. Um, <laughs> guns and taters. You said that. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Uh, because that's that question comes up a lot. Is people are like, hey, do I need like ten acres to shoot? And I'm like, I don't think so. I think you're no. good with whatever. Yeah, yeah. Say that safe backdrop. Some people. I mean, I've seen an acre of property and they they burn it. Now, if you're in a city limit, like Dalton Gardens is not the county. That is right. a city limit. So yeah. you, you have to pay attention to their ordinances there. But when you're out in the county, yeah, you're good. Yeah. Um, what was the other question? Oh, like, do you need to be a distance away from a dwelling or anything like that? Or is it purely the backdrop? The backdrop. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. Don't I, shoot towards an occupied dwelling. Yeah, yeah. I shoot off my deck and that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. I've seen people shoot out from their house. What about hunting on your own property? Is there a size requirement on the, the acreage? Nope. Nope. Again, in the county. In the county. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. As soon as you start encroaching into those city limits, they're going to have their own ordinances that right. you're going to pay attention can, to. Can you bow hunt in Dalton Gardens? I heard you could, but then I see signs that you can't. I, I, I think that's something they talked about a while back because the deer population was growing, but I believe they, they did not okay. end up doing Seriously. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would that be would something. Be gnarly. That would be something. Yeah. <laughs> I there, mean, you could. There's I a got lot, friends with property over there, and you could just sit on your deck and just be like, oh, there's a deer. Well, those, deer, deer. Deer. The, oh, they're know. kind of docile. They don't, I mean, they're, they're just, they're no, used they to the people, yeah. so they're not. It's not going to be a hard target at all. Yeah. You know? oh, I know. Crazy. I almost, I almost run into one every single day. Going someone to do does. Oh, someone hits one every day. Yeah, I believe I had to discharge a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Or dispatch. Dispatch. Discharge. Yeah. You discharge your firearm to dispatch. dispatch. Yeah. Face. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was one. I had to. I had to take one down on the freeway. It was right in the middle of the freeway, and I called them like, uh, "Dude, this thing's a massive traffic hazard right now." And so I had to stop the freeway and I felt so bad because I'm looking at the first car there and it's like kids and they're like looking and I'm like, what's he doing mommy? I'm looking at him like ears. I have my, yeah. I have my ear pro on. I'm like, that's your ears. Cover your eyes, please. Like the kids look, are just like, you look at the deer. Make my I'm, day, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay with kids <laughs> hunting and everything else, but I don't know what they're, they've never seen it before. It's going to be traumatic. Oh, my AR out. And I'm like, Oh, so when I left the jail and came over to patrol, I was uh, in plain clothes. I was ready, waiting for the academy. So they put me with a couple of different deputies to ride. And I'm riding with Jason Bates, who's a sergeant okay. now, right? Riding with Jason yeah. Bates. And we're driving on the prairie on a Saturday. And we get a call that a horse uh, got spooked by a truck. Oh, no. Ran headfirst into a steel mailbox and was laying on the side of the road. Saturday afternoon. It's busy on prairie. So, oh. we, so we go out there in post falls. We go out there. And, uh, we, there's people everywhere. People are going by, I see this horse. It has a big, big gash in its head. It, 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 you can't save it. Yeah. So it's a domestic animal. So we can't just dispatch it. But the owner said, yeah, there's nothing we can do. Go ahead and do it. Give him permission. So Bates gets there and he grabs his pistol and he, he, sh <laughs> I was standing behind Bates. He shoots this horse in the hole from where it hit the, uh, the, uh, mailbox and the amount of blood that came back <laughs> out soaked him from head to toe are you so, serious so head to toe it looked it was I mean, that's a lot of blood oh, that's in a man. horse right i have a horse story that's it, similar now, now I believe so, it, so yeah, i have a cat story you know, oh he soaked him head to toe <laughs> he's he's sitting he looks at me he's covered that's when we had the tan and the and the green ah, pants yeah and he's covered it's now brown i mean it is just blood everywhere so he asked the homeowner there hey can i go in and change and he's in there for about a half hour and he comes out and he has like still blood on his face and he's not wearing his shirt anymore. Well, I'm this new guy sitting here trying to direct traffic and every car and truck and minivan that goes by, you know, everyone's happy. It's Saturday. They're having a great day. It's sunny. They're, you know, they're really happy. And they look over and there's just the looks on their face. Oh, every car that goes by, there's kids crying. <laughs> the horse got shot in the What'd face. you do? Yeah. 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 Uh, geez, I didn't have a lick of blood on me. Do. Luckily I hid behind Bay. Oh, they, they, uh, me and my partner had to put down a horse once and he shot it with the, uh, AR right Right, direct, and it was standing up too. Yeah, elk and bigger. I'm gonna go shotgun, probably 12 yeah, gauge, like not know. pistol. Yeah, it's 
it was a fountain of blood out of its mouth, like a fire hose. Oh. Like, oh, dude, disturbing. Yeah, like, yeah. that one. There's a couple. That one. Gallons. We both were like, we just like went and cuddled back at the office after that because I was like, fuck, that was terrible. Well, if that isn't enough for you, this is going to get a little more explicit. Oh, so yeah. turn it off if you don't like this. But <laughs> how do we get on this? Go, Dave. Yeah, we're not so happy I was about uh, this, right. No. Yeah, this is it. No. I know people. So I was uh, when I was at the fire department. One of my first shifts, I I ended up getting the name of the cat killer. Oh, okay. I thought you guys El, saved cats. El Gato. Man. What's up? Yeah. No, we don't say that. You say a cat skeleton in the tree. That's your line. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I've you, knew it, you knew I it. Knew you knew it. You were just pulling it yeah, out. They all me. say that. Yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, I was down in Fontana at Station 71. I was a brand new fireman. I was working with Mondo Rodriguez and I had uh, my whole crew and we ran um we ran an engine out of there with three people and then we ran a squad. The squad kind of run most of the calls. We got a call at night for a seizure. It's like three in the morning. I was brand new. I was driving the squad. Wasn't even a medic at the time. And uh we headed down to uh we're going down the main road there. I mean, three o'clock in the morning. This is before, you know, all the cell phone cameras and everything else too, which was fantastic. But we're driving down the road. We're following the ambulance. Um, ambulance is in front of us, then us, then the engine. Ambulance hits this cat. Then we hit the cat. <sighs> Apparently the engine hits the cat because we get there and like, dude, you guys see that cat? We're like, oh, dude. It wasn't a cat, but destroyed the that one. thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all talking about this. We get there. It's just a general seizure. We can handle it. So the engine breaks free and goes back to the, uh, back to the station. And a lot of times those guys would like hang out at night, you know, they've been up a few times, kind of sit out front of the engine and just talk in front of the station. It's quiet. So, uh, we stay on scene, ambulance takes whoever it is, goes to the hospital and, and we're driving back down, uh, not arrow, um, Sierra. It's like the, <laughs> one of the main roads and, and Fontana, Luck, luckily it's three in the morning and we pass the cat. We're like, Oh, there's that cat and it's moving. And I'm oh, like, Oh my. dude. Oh wow. So we flip around mm -hmm. real quick. Um, like I said, it's like day two, we get out and this cat's like, Dude, he's suffering. He's, I mean, we're like, God, dude, we got to freaking put it out of its misery. I don't want to just leave it there. And uh, so Mono's like, run over it again. I'm like, dude, I don't want this freaking <laughs> blood all over the the rig. Like, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, go get it, go get an axe. And I'm like, I'm not going to decapitate a cat out here. And I'm also not going to hit an axe against the ground. He's like, well, go get a sledgehammer. Oh, like, that's all right. All right. I get, mm. I'm the new guy. So uh -huh. I go get it and I walk over there and he's like, go hit it. And I'm like, no way, dude. So I hand him the sledgehammer. I was like, my wife would kill me. She loves cats. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, so he, you know, he looks around, he makes sure nobody's out there and he's like, oh man, he's like, I gotta, gotta end this thing. And like I said, I mean, it is like almost flat on one end and just struggling on the other. So he goes over there and hits it and the cat jumps up and starts running in circles and he drops the sledgehammer and runs back to the rig. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So now I have this like half dead <laughs> cat, like just, I mean, he is just destroyed, can't even move. And I'm like running around now with a sledgehammer trying to put it out of its misery. Oh jeez. So I finally do. And I look down and I'm like, my turnouts are like covered in blood. The <laughs> sledgehammer is like, covered in blood. I'm like, Oh no. So we go back to the, the station. Well, my crew doesn't know me that well. It's Captain Mejia and Steve Simpson and Thorne Benedict, who is from my hometown. And he loved to give me a hard time. And we pull up and I get out and I'm bloody. I got the sledgehammer and they're like, what did you do? <laughs> I'm like, Oh, so anyways, I got the name for being the cat killer. That's a disturbing one, man. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't fun. We used to have guys wasn't uh, fun. slit deer's throats a lot to, just to. Yeah. Well, we used to quiet, have to, quietly, like if you're in a neighborhood. Yeah, and it, uh, used, it used to be you have to, uh, there's a full report if you dispatch an animal, right? Yeah, we've we had changed that, that now. But yeah, that's what people would, guys they avoid, would do. They avoid it so they don't exactly. have to do the report. Well, yeah. I didn't use my gun. Well, it's yeah. so hard. We'll see what comments we get on this one. You know, it's so hard because there's people out there like, we don't want them to suffer. I'm like, we don't either. None no, of us are out no, there like no. taking out animals. We just don't want them to just sit Just because I was suffer. smiling when I did it doesn't mean that I enjoyed <laughs> I it. I have shot, I shot a lot of deer. I worked in Northern, yeah. Northern Humboldt County and it was like, it was a murder fest in rutting season up there. It was insanity. <laughs> Dude, like, people driving guts fast everywhere. at night. Oh, Big rigs just destroying, there's deer guts everywhere all the time. So it was like, we were constantly shooting. Oh deer. yeah. Yeah. Well, and I hate, hey, I, it's not fun at all. No. It's like, sucks. One thing. Oh, good. Well, I was just, just have a good PSA for anyone moving in this area that isn't uh, familiar with deer. Okay, if it's a deer, uh, we go to so many crashes that is they swerve to miss the deer and hit the dump truck, oh, or dude. they swerve to miss the deer oh, and yeah. went off the road into the lake. Hit the deer. Hit the deer. Okay, moose. Maybe, maybe <laughs> don't hit the moose. That would maybe don't hit the that moose. would be a bad day, right? Elk. Maybe aim. You know, if you can. 
the one side of the elk so it kind of spins around but you know a deer you better hit the deer dog yeah. i'm sorry hit the dog because every yeah. time they swerve and miss they hit a pole they hit a or building a family. or a fa yeah, exactly yeah, I, I don't know how many rollovers i've been to where it's like oh i swerved for whatever a freaking rabbit and it's like oh my god just, yeah that was dumb the, yeah. yeah and and no now no trace of it so i mean when we get there it's like well where was this animal or was yeah. it because you were drinking yeah or on yeah. your cell phone right yeah. right right no, that's crazy. And uh, honestly, that's a, that's a big thing up here. I mean, it's funny. Every time that I dispatched a deer, there was a butcher there. It was the Weird. weirdest thing. Yeah. I'd have somebody pull up and be like, hey, I'm a butcher. And I'm like, you want to claim it? So that's another thing. If you so, do hit a deer and you do dispatch a deer because it's going to die, we're not asking you to, to nip something in the heel and then go shoot it. Um, you know, let nature take its course. I know that's the way that, you know, we were told that, hey, mm -hmm. if it can get out of there, even yes. if it's let nature take its course but if it's in the roadway or something you got to take care of it but if you do have to dispatch or you do see somebody hit a deer or anything else the meat is still good and a lot of people up here are really good at salvaging that mm -hmm. you can fill out a reclamation form yep. correct where within, do they get that oh uh, you go online um the uh i believe it's fishing games website okay and it's within i think it's within 48 hours you're supposed to do that but it okay. could be any animal it used to only be deer now it's elk moose yeah so that's I mean, there's, the money that's where the money's at right there yeah, right yeah Ooh, moose so, Dude, oh, yeah. if you, yeah, if somebody hits a moose, I get it. That's sad. I don't want to see a moose die, but yeah, let's at least not, not, not don't let it go to waste. That's a, yeah, that's awesome. You can that reclaim you can that, that meat, fill out that form. It's not going to go against a tag or anything else, yeah. correct? Yeah, and then you just there you go. That's it. And for These the moose, I mean the moose. One thing we have to get that roadway cleared pretty quick. Pick the moose up, back a truck underneath, and now you get to go spend the nice. next eight hours at your house quartering that thing. Yeah. Fantastic. I dropped yeah. that straight off at a butcher. Yep, here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fill I, my freezer. I hit yeah, a deer no at 105 one time when I was rolling to a back of my partner. <sighs> it was terrifying. Yeah. Headlights out, airbag deployed. Bad, oh, really? Bad, yeah. Oh, I did yeah. not hear about this. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. why we started all the, the push bumpers that we have. If you don't have a bumper. I had a push bumper. It just oh, yeah. annihilated it all of that. Vaporizes it, yeah. yeah. Well, at that speed. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's that, was a, that, was a, uh, that was a shocker, and that one, that one got in my head for a little bit. Oh, but yeah. The smell of deer gut and airbag is yeah, like, you never get out of your brain. Yeah. I know we're probably getting close here. What time are we at? Eh, we're 50 minutes in. Okay. Got a question real fast about waterways and everything else. Okay. Go back to those. Yeah. How, what's the, what's the biggest change? I mean, obviously we've had a lot of people coming yeah. to town, but in the last five years, like what are, what are the big changes that are happening on the water? What's the biggest thing that you're seeing currently? The, the, the types of boats. I mean, the boats are, are getting crazy big wake surf boats. I mean, those things are, they're 350 plus thousand dollars. So we're getting a lot more of those and, and they are pushing out some pretty big wakes. So just, you know, minding your wake, you know, knowing where you're at, how close to shore you are, that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, the etiquette, again, knowing your ordinances and that we have a lot of people, like you said, coming from other areas that aren't familiar as much with this. So they, it's all of our waterways. We all get to enjoy it. It's the publics. It's not the people that live on the water. Um, they're actually encroaching. They get an encroachment permit. So they're actually encroaching in the public's waterways. So it's all of ours. We all get to share it. Let's all take care of it. We find so much trash when we dive. We dive at uh, Tubbs That's Hill. That's no good. Oh, we dive at Tubbs Hill. Our dive team will do it at least once a year. And we'll go to other places. We've done a pond array. We've been all over the place. But we'll uh, we'll actually join forces with uh, the public local scuba shop jake scuba um they Dude, actually that's kind of, awesome oh yeah they, they put it yeah. on and we'll pull out thousands of pounds of trash every single time we do it we do it a couple months later in the same spot and it, there's no change so that sucks we have a lot of people that, that are just coming here and they're throwing stuff in there and then again the size of the boats and the amount of boats i know all the local dealerships here they can't keep them in stock they're selling them like crazy yeah so that's big is how many vessels we're actually putting on here Dude, don't and throw again, your shit in the lake right don't and, then, I, and the education yeah, yeah. The education yeah. it's i had a couple legislators on my boat a couple years on the sheriff's boat we're going out i'm not going to mention their names recently a couple years past couple years and i asked them what can we do to mandate voter education and they said yeah it's not going to happen in idaho we we don't want we don't want more government we don't want to do that so not going to happen that's so a pushback huh I, I asked how many people have to die to change that and they said oh a lot a lot yeah and that is that is something that's pretty typical i mean you know i tell people there's a lot less regulation and i don't want more law enforcement in my life yeah. i don't want more regulation um but there's also the reality and i mean as much as people hate to hear it the more people that come here the more regulation you get because there's a lot of dumb people out there that's yep. the x factor yep. it's people they're the x factor so the more you get the more regulation you get but if you want your family to be safe you want people to be educated I'm all for education and just making sure that people know what they should expect when they're out there. Absolutely. Yeah, man, that was a lot. Did we cover all the things we wanted to cover? 
That was so much. How about Ryan's new truck? Do we want to cover that? Did you get a new truck? Which tr- my work truck? Yeah, he constantly tells me about his <laughs> awesome new work truck. It is Ooh. pretty nice. Nah, it is heck pretty yeah. Nice. yeah. So I know it's loud. Yeah, he just built out a truck for backcountry and and marine and all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. awesome. There's a lot of gear in there. Yeah, yeah it has that. it has all sorts. I mean, he can like run a full command out of the back of that thing. And yeah. I mean, Dude. Uh, I mean that's pretty typical. But I mean, they finally put something together that was awesome. Yeah, one so. ton Duramax. It's it's a oh yeah. Hopefully, I can get some use this summer. That's yeah. reason to keep the job as long as possible, right there. <laughs> yeah, right. To get the good truck. Yeah. Wow, Jeez. Anything else you would say to people that are maybe moving up here, interested, or either from jobs or just safety point or anything yeah. else? I mean, do the research. You can reach out. You can always ask us questions. Uh, you know, we we actually want to be approached when we're out on the waterways. Come say hi to us. You know, we'll be in the you know, the green boats and we're out there. We we there 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 are no stupid questions. Uh, so feel free to ask us the questions when you're out there. Um, we don't like to cite. We will cite if we have to, but really it's education over enforcement. We actually issue about 9% of our stops. So if we make, we make about 5,000 stops, like actual violations of law every year, we probably have about 20,000 contacts, but 5,000 stops. And we only issue about 9% citations actually dropped even 7% is the most citations we've ever had, but it was 7%. So it's making our stops are going up. The amount of people we're seeing, the amount of violations are going up, but we really do just want to educate for the most part. If yeah. it's a safety thing, then that's, if you're not wearing a life jacket, that's a death, right? If you, so you if when you're supposed to, like on a water skiing uh, competition vest, if one, it says not a life jacket on there, you're going to get a citation every single time because if you become unconscious, you will die. And that's our, our, you know, our dive teams coming out and, and you're risking yeah. a lot of lives with that. So just know uh, you, you can, you can do some research. You can call us, um, and then take some of the classes. Like I said, uh, we have that, um, the, uh, boater education, uh, boat Idaho, it's called, it's also boat America. It's the same in every state. It just kind of tailors to that state's ordinances, okay. but it's good in all the states. So come get your boater education. That's and then awesome. if you also, if you have not driven that boat or, or even if you just want to, you know, make your skill. I always, every time I, I've been boating for 30 plus years, every time I go out, I spend a little bit of time on docking and, and, you know, just honing my skills. Practicing. Yeah. So if you want to have a, a, an actual U S coast guard certified captain come out and help you with that stuff, that's where that safer boater uh, organization, yeah. it does cost a little bit of money, but it's and worth then your, it in the long your run. new business. Can we post yeah. a link in the bio yeah. to this? Yeah. So we'll, we'll get that information for you. Sounds we'll post good. that link to the bio so you can see how you can hire a captain or hire somebody for training. That Absolutely. would be, that would be awesome. That's a huge idea. Cause I, we bought a boat two years ago. Uh, well, we bought two boats here, but the first one we bought, you know, they got like a five minute introduction on how to drive that yeah. thing. And it was a double decker pontoon. And when the wind caught that thing, it it's was a sail. super it's a hard sail. to dock yeah. that. Oh man, that was stressful. I have a, a, you said Yamaha, I have a Yamaha, yeah. the 212X. Um, and that thing, when you put the canopy up and there's no prop that goes in the water, it's a jet boat, a twin jet. It, it's a sail also. So you've really got to know what you're doing. They're very tricky. Uh, yes. Thankfully, I, mine, I, so I, yeah, my Yamaha now has two engines. So I've learned that I can Same. spin that thing on a dime. Yes. If you go one forward, one reverse, but like that was trial and error to get there. So absolutely. Well, and it's just practice. And again, you take someone that has the knowledge to come out with you. That and, would be and, very yeah. helpful. Yeah. And and that uh, the the safer boater, it starts with the four uh, the four hours. It's one module, but we can do up to four modules. We can even do a week long training if you have a, a large boat like a yacht. We'll do man overboard drills. There's a lot of other stuff that we can do as well. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll get educated, and if you have the background uh to support it or the knowledge skills the desire to work on the waterways call ryan talk to him if you want to be a volunteer um in the backcountry search and rescue you have you know rescue systems one two trench rescue confined space whatever it might be uh, and you have that background you can reach out to ryan and we'll put some contact information in there for him oh sounds good thanks ryan hey thanks for having me guys yeah that's fun absolutely all right